how the heretics, the Jehovah Witnesses, have gotten two new members in their governing body. And the governing body is often referred to as the faithful and discreet slave. And the teaching of the faithful and discreet slave is the second most important teaching of the Jehovah Witnesses. What would be the first and most important teaching of the Jehovah Witnesses? Their literature gives you the answer. I guess some comments first is that when Jehovah Witnesses tell that we have new, two new members of the governing body, they will not inform you about the process, how Jesus elected these men. And they will also not tell them anything about their education because Jehovah Witnesses don't really focus on an education. And that's okay. I am a self-made and self-proclaimed goat farmer. It's okay to proclaim yourself to be a goat farmer. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I think with an organization with 8 million members and huge empire of real estate and money, it's weird that Jesus just elect someone in secrecy. Anyway, the Bible. I just want to show you where Jehovah Witnesses have the wonderful teaching of the governing body, being the faithful and discreet slave, Matthew 24, 45. If you would open your Bible and read with me. It says in 45, who is really the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time. So Jesus makes a rhetorical question and Jehovah Witnesses believe that this was fulfilled in 1919. And then it says in 48, but if ever that evil slave should say in his heart, my master is delaying and should start to beat his fellow slaves and should eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that is not expecting blah, blah, blah. So when you have a witness say the faithful and discreet slave, they quite often forget that the, even if there is a faithful slave, there is an open question if he will remain faithful. When we go to Watchtower Online Library and search for apostolic secession, we will find the definition. It says that apostolic secession is the doctrine that the twelve apostles have successors to whom authority has been passed by divine appointment. In the Roman Catholic Church, the bishops as a group are said to be successors of the apostles, and the Pope is claimed to be the successor of Peter. It is maintained that the Roman pontiff come immediately after, occupy the position and perform the functions of Peter, to whom Christ is said to have given primacy of authority over the whole church. Not a Bible teaching, according to Watchtower Online Library. So, apostolic succession in this case would be that the new governing body members follow Joseph Rutherford that was elected by Jesus invisibly in 1919. And since very few people can appear invisibly, it must have been Jesus. The most important teaching of the Catholics were the teaching of apostolic secession. Because the Catholics believe that when Jesus said, Peter, you are Peter, on this rock I will build my church. They believe that Peter was the first Pope. And the Pope is the rock that the church is built on, the foundation. So we would say that, yes, he said this to Peter, but he did not say that there would be one guy following another. So the teaching of apostolic secession would de facto be the most important teaching of the Catholics. It's in the book Reasoning with the Scriptures. And we used to say this to Catholics. Well, if the governing body was elected by Jesus in 1919, as the faithful and discreet slave, that would be Joseph Rutherford and seven others. So one slave equals eight people. But all those people are dead, and the new ones that are elected by Jesus in 2022. That would mean apostolic secession. And I remember when we spoke with Catholics about this, and the Catholics would say, if they knew anything about the Bible, <laughs> They would say, the Bible says that you are Peter. It's very specific. 
and we would open our scriptures and say, who is? So the Jehovah Witness religion is based on a rhetorical question, while the Catholic religion is based on a very specific statement. And if, a Cat if you meet a Catholic that knows their Bible, they would say, who is the faithful and discreet slave? Let's allow the Bible to answer this question. And then they would go to the place where it says, you are Peter. So our only argument when we were talking to the Catholics were that apostolic secession is not in the Bible. And now Jehovah Witnesses believe in apostolic secession. So as of today, Rutherford was elected in 1919 by Jesus. And this rubs over to two people in 2022, which gives me a very interesting thought. What about the two witness rule? When a child is being abused by a, under a Jehovah Witness, they will not protect the child without two witnesses. I'm okay with them not disfellowshipping a person because of lack of two witnesses, but they should protect the child. But no, 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 no can do. We need two witnesses. Well, according to JW.org, those two men are anointed Christians. So first they were anointed by Jesus, but Jesus did not provide two witnesses. He just, you are anointed, I will tell you and only you. And then you will tell everyone else when you drink a glass of wine. Well, anyone could do that. Silage, give me silage, by silage I endure. Jehovah gives me silage, your victory is sure. Yeah, now I'm the Pope because I took silage and God told me. Wouldn't it be reasonable with a second witness? No, I think we've gone with the silage. I'm now the faithful and discreet. Anyone can say that. Seriously. There's no second witness that they are anointed. And there's no idea about how they were elected into the governing body. And yet, Jehovah Witnesses still say that the Catholics claim of the Pope being the successor of Peter is unfounded. Well, show me in the Bible where these two people were elected by Jesus in 1919. And then I will spit out the silage and come back to Jehovah, a.k.a. Watchtower's religion. Like and subscribe.